and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. Today we are looking at yet another Brazilian battleship. And if the whole Atlantico thing is, uh, <laughs> is something to go by, then uh, this one's going to be fun. This is the Rio. This is, well, technically this ship did exist, although it did not exist under this name. Now, we've, we have this ship in game, actually. Uh, this is HMS Agincourt. Only this is HMS Agincourt before uh, Brazil ordered her and then realized they couldn't, they could neither afford her nor, nor did they need her still at that point, sold it to the Ottomans. Uh, the, she, the, she then got requisitioned by the British, which uh, annoyed the Ottomans to the degree that it was a contributing factor to them joining against the British in World War I. And uh, they did pay them back dearly <laughs> in Gallipoli for that one uh, and became a Agincourt. But this is the what if version. This is the Agincourt if the Brazilians had kept her. So um, let's, uh, well, well, let's compare then these two ships, shall we? Uh, it's the Rio and the Agincourt. The first thing we notice, and yes, this is a Brazilian battleship, and we're starting to see a trend here. Uh, secondary overload at tier 5. Okay, we'll take it. It's a secondary overload one, so you get 20% range and reload. Uh, she does have marginally more hit points than Agincourt. It, in practice, it's not going to matter. The armor on these things isn't great. It's a typical sort of British battlecruiser armor. Uh, that you find here and they are very very slow in fact they are barely faster than american standard battleships the uh, the rio does have a very slight edge in turn time but in in practice it's not going to make a huge difference in maneuverability uh, the next thing we realize is that while the rio just like the agincourt has 305 millimeter guns in seven twin turrets yes this sounds <laughs> all these these things have all the guns uh, she's got a 27 second reload on them, on 305s. That is a long reload. And she's got less range than the Agincourt as well. So what gives? Well, uh, this gives. <laughs> In return, the secondaries are reloading twice as fast and have a 6.6 .6 kilometer range. Now these might be 150 millimeter secondaries, but they're not German 150 millimeter secondaries. These are, how am I put this? They're not great. Uh, in, in fact, they're actually pretty poor, to be honest. But uh, you've got 20 of them in casements all, all, away uh, all around the ship. And uh, they fire really, really quickly because you, well, you also get the, you also get the secondary overload skill. Uh, the uh, anti-aircraft armament is, as is classic, it's a tier 5. There isn't going to be any. I mean, she's got, <laughs> she's got some, but it's not going to make any difference. And the concealment is actually better than on the Agincourt. No, we're not doing a concealment build on that thing. <laughs> what we're doing, however, is going to have a see, going to see what we can uh, what we can throw in there in terms of uh, in terms of secondaries. Uh, unfortunately, we have no elite bonus that actually can improve the secondaries, so that was a bit of a bummer. Uh, citadel protection, uh, citadel, yeah, citadel protection damage reduction is kind of neat, and I see what they did there. It's like, oh yeah, this is a brawler. The problem is it's percentage based, and these things don't have no citadel protection or uh, reduction or citadel protection or damage reduction. <laughs> ah, la, la. English Terry, do you speak it? Uh, to begin with, so adding these percentages on there is kind of cute, but also does make absolutely no difference in practice. Still a pretty squishy ship. Now, the camouflage then, nope. Unfortunately, the camouflage doesn't buff the secondaries either. So she gives hit points, which is good, because we're going to need those. Fire range on the mains and better dispersion on the mains. Uh, the 4% better dispersion on the mains, I would have really loved to get secondary range here. <laughs> but maybe there's going to be a special camo of some sorts that, uh, that actually buffs the secondaries. So once again, uh, and of course, the torpedo damage reduction is meaningless here. Uh, once again, um, no, that is a no. 
Equipment wise, well, we're tier five. There's not an awful lot of choice. So the best we can do is secondary battery mod one to give us 15% reload of the secondaries. I mean, we could technically also use the main battery mod two to shave something of this absolutely disastrous 27 second base reload on these guns. But um, I, we're going full on secondaries with this anyway. Uh, propulsion, yes, you do want propulsion. Um, and steering, I would recommend because one thing that the Ajinko is traditionally very good at is, well, let me show you something. And, and it's going to be the same thing on this thing, so, so we can see it relatively easily. Uh, the high explosive damage on these guns is just below 1,000. So she can do round about 7,000 points, a little bit under 7,000 points of damage with the high explosives. Now let's have a look at a at a destroyer at around that tier. So if we're looking at a, oh, I don't know, an Isokaze at that tier. Uh, I need something that's actually upgraded. I probably don't have one. Um, Burask. Okay. Yeah, we'll take, we'll take that thing. Uh, this thing's got 11,000 hit points. So you can almost one-shot that thing. <laughs> a Clemson. Uh, I don't know. We'll throw it into the comparison just so we see it, what it would look like if it's upgraded. So... Uh, Clemson has uh, 9,600 hit points. So if you are encountering a destroyer that is even just a little bit damaged, you can cleanly blow it out of the water <laughs> with a main battery salvo. Unfortunately, you have to wait almost half a minute to do it again, <laughs> which is a little bit of a bummer, but uh, such, is, uh, su such is the price that we're paying. Uh, so that brings us to the commander. I only have one. Literally, that's the only that's the only South American commander I have. So you're gonna have to live with the epic commander here, and um, I have actually because he was already tier ten. So we will. I'm my 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 rationale is here that pe people who have the um, who have the Atlantico probably have been playing the Atlantico for quite a bit and might have been upgrading their commander quite a bit as well. And this gives us the close quarters combat expert plus, which is really the only thing. We can do to buff the secondaries here. Now, one thing that I mentioned uh, in terms of the camouflage. Now, you could be tempted to uh, to use the cross um, the crossfire for secondary range. The rest of it is pretty much wasted, though. <laughs> so, and obviously, you need to keep buying the thing because it's timed. But uh, that would be one option to boost the secondaries a little bit. But as it is, uh, again, our commander gives us uh, dispersion on minus 20% dispersion on the secondaries. And as it's classical for these kind of casement guns, uh, they are not particularly precise to begin with. So, uh, do we have do we have ourselves a um, another Atlantico? No. Uh, this ship gets absolutely massacred by battleships, <laughs> even at tier, because 305 millimeter is quite low. It's a big ship. It's got lots of deck and things on top that you can hit. And um, the armor piercing is a bit meh on uh, on these guns. And then and that's the same for the Ajinko. So for for her tier, especially if she gets herself into, into tier 6 battles and faces things like New Mexico or something like that, uh, she will have a really, really hard time, especially that she doesn't need to get into 6.6 kilometer range because outside 6.6 kilometer range, you've got a 20 second reload Ajinko. Which isn't fun. <laughs> but uh, it's a mid-tier ship, right? And uh, mid-tier can be fun for all kinds of other reasons. So let's get ourselves into some gameplay. In the first battle, we actually are in a T6 game, but fortunately they're only tier 5 battleships. It's bad enough as it is, even a Congo has um, sufficient firepower to really, really hurt this ship. But we are up against uh, Piotr Veliki, a Kongo, a Sirius, a Fushun, Hatsuharu, and Nicholas. So, off we go. Uh, it's uh, Scorching Islands. You find Scorching Islands quite a lot at these kind of tiers. So, uh, this is not no, this is not a terrible map uh, to, to play. The problem is the speed, or the, rather the lack thereof on this ship. So, generally what you want to sort of do in a faster ship would be to, 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 to rush the flank. And I'm going to try it in this thing. But um, if, you find your, if you find yourself in a situation where you need to help out on the other side, then um, 
How do I put this? Things can be a little bit difficult because it takes you quite a while to get there. Anyway, I, I have switched over to the high explosive. Why? Because the armor piercing isn't great to begin with. And I've got three destroyers on the enemy team, so there's going to be at least one of them coming around this way. And I want to have the right ammunition loaded to uh, blap it in the face if I can. Because, you know, that's that, that's really the that's really the only party trick that the Ajinko has, and it's similar with this thing. Uh, unfortunately, it's the bot Omaha that we see first. Nope, no, never mind, there's a Nicholas. Hello, Mr. Nicholas. And let's see if I can hit him from there. Salvo out. Uh, dispersion is actually not too bad. And that's most of the Nicholas gone. <laughs> he was probably like, what the hell just hit me? Okay, let's deal with that bot Omaha there. Just so it doesn't uh, keep distracting my uh, my teammates. And against things like Omaha's, the high explosive was actually not a terrible choice. Because these things are so thinly armored that... Uh, most likely, uh, and yes, I know you're there, Sirius, we'll deal with you in a second, that most likely you'll be over-penetrating with armor-piercing, but uh, yeah, with the high explosive, you can totally, uh, you can totally sit at an Omaha. Okay, so the Sirius is dealing with our bot, Alba, and is actually managing to get torpedoes on target. Uh, and that seems to be the rest of this flank, pretty much. Uh, so he is out of secondary range, obviously. Uh, even if I was if I was to enable the secondary overload, that would still be too far away. So let's get a couple of shots out at the Sirius. And yeah, full pen, nice full pens on the on the high explosive. He doesn't quite do as much damage. And here it probably would have been better to use the armor piercing. Uh, but uh, again, Sirius is a relatively lightly armored ship. And he just Damaconed, so if I can get a couple of permafires, that's not something to sneeze at. And also, and he just went AFK. So <laughs> he was like, no, screw that, I'm not playing anymore. Not if I've got a battleship on my tail. So uh, we'll just wipe him out. That should be a dead serious. Ha, ha, see what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that leaves only three ships on the enemy team. Uh, yeah, mid-tier battles can swing that way sometimes. Uh, it's it's unfortunate if you're on the receiving end of it and you find yourself uh, being the only remaining player after, after I don't know, like three minutes or so of gameplay. Uh, but we've got the Congo to shoot at and uh, against battleships, the, especially at range, the high explosive is actually the better choice, even though the, the fire chance of 10% is pretty measly. But you've got a lot of guns, if you're not pointing the ship straight forward, but I have to because it's kind of an island in the way. And we're making our way slowly into uh, towards the region of the enemy cap. Uh, that Nicholas is about to is about to be dead as well. Uh, Congo is on flood. I haven't even used my secondary overload yet. So uh, let's just get rid of that thing and now we can use it. So Daka! <laughs> I think the Congo is going to be dead before I can even make, make good use of my secondary overload. But uh, yeah, they are firing pretty much in under three seconds. And there's, there's a dead Congo that just leaves the Nicholas. And uh, yeah, then there's one battleship somewhere in the corner, but that's pretty much it. We're not going to make it over there anymore. So it doesn't really quite show the the power of the secondaries, but uh, she, she can she can still do Ajinko things while we are... Um, and, and yeah, not, nothing's gonna happen anymore in this battle, so I'm just gonna fast forward towards uh, towards the end of the battle when we're all sitting in the enemy capture circle. And the Kotovsky kills the enemy Pyotr Veliki. We had no way of actually getting into range, but we got ourselves a couple of capture points still. Still, it's not an awful lot of team score that we got out of this because the thing only does 21 odd nods unless somebody gets out and pushes. So uh, well played for, for the enemy destroyer and it's a ruffle stomp medal for our team because, you know, <laughs> but we still did the most damage in the team even though we haven't, haven't really used our secondaries. So let's do that again and uh, see if that makes a difference. And here we are uh, on Scorching Islands. I did say I'm seeing this map a lot of this tier uh, in a top tier battle. So we're up against the Rhine, a German uh, German carrier, Congo, Ishizuchi, Omaha, a Uberi, and an Izukaze. With the Uberi, you have to watch out with the torpedoes, because that thing gets nasty torpedoes. All right, anyway, let's go. Only one only one destroyer, that, that lone Izukaze there. So uh, again, that map, and uh, it, the safer bet in this ship is to kind of stay around the, the, the middle of it. Because if you find yourself with one flank and it turns out that the whole enemy team goes the other way, 
you're basically not going to get anywhere. <laughs> um, we'll leave her on the armor piercing because there's only one destroyer. And we might be... But yeah, like I said, the armor piercing is kind of underwhelming. And um, it's not a terrible choice just to switch straight, blah, blah, just to switch straight up to high explosive. There comes the enemy carrier. We have no AA, which is normal at this tier. And um, the gun angles are not bad on the mains, but I think one of the one of the Q turrets is a little bugged, such that uh, if you're out of out, out of alignment, then uh, it's not it's not going to it's going to start turning the other way. Uh, there's that Uberi that I was talking about. I am spotted. Shots out at that thing and see if we can get some hits on target at least. Uh, that wasn't bad. Five hits. No citadels, but I uh, wasn't expecting any. Not with the armor piercing on these guns. Uh, and uh, there comes the Omaha. Now the Omaha has torpedoes. It's it's one of those uh, American light cruisers that actually has, and there's the Ishizuchi as well, there, that actually has torpedoes. So we're going to slow down, it's because the Omaha probably launched his torpedoes already. And we're just going to uh, shoot at him and use the secondary overload while we are, while we are just, you know, shredding this thing to bits. And reversing, there is the Uberi back there, so we probably have to go forward again, just in case the Omaha has unloaded the torpedoes here. You can see that the Omaha is not shooting, now he's shooting, so he's probably now fired his torpedoes. And there they come, I can see them, but uh, perfect broadside avoided the Omaha torps, and that is a dead Omaha. Although you will notice that I managed to bounce a 305mm armor piercing shell point blank of a broadsiding Omaha. <laughs> That actually takes some skill to do that, believe me. Okay, uh, just in case the Uberi has torpedoes away, because that thing is nasty. I'm gonna back off a little bit, almost in secondary range. And uh, my, I'm still waiting for my main guns to reload. It's the uh, it's the uh, Christopher Colombo practice round in tier five. So shots out, and that is a broadsiding Uberi, and that is disappointing. That should have been a lot more than that. Okay. Not sure if he's got torpedoes away at this point. Uh, there come these are carrier torpedoes, but I'm gonna move. I think I'm gonna move forward. Yeah, there come the Uberi torpedoes. So we're gonna have to move forward and uh, slightly turn the ship, just you know, to ensure that these torpedoes don't hit us. Because these are 600 millimeter torpedoes. These things are proper nasty. And once again, he's outside my secondary range, and I am running a little low on hit points because the carrier is now coming for me as well. But that is a dead Uberi and. I have anything to say about it yep that is also a dead phoenix so we've cleaned up this flank pretty su uh, successfully but there comes the izukaze now uh, i have the secondaries obviously also on the other side so secondary overload up and uh, let's see if we can somewhat bait him into dropping nah, i don't think uh, i don't think he's been going to be dropping his trophy yeah he, he dropped him like that so full ahead let's see if we can manage to Managed to speed up as much as possible. Obviously, we just take that thing out. But there comes the carry on the cross drop, and we've taken one, I believe. So that wasn't too bad. Um, and the Phantom one, which actually had passed by already and took my rudder out. Uh, but yeah, such is life with torpedoes. Now there's the Ishizuchi, and I am still being dropped by the carrier. The carrier has nothing better to shoot at, I guess, because I'm the. As you can see, I am the most forward ship, and I'm not even at half point of the map because my team's literally just clustering around the, the base, which is which can be a decent strategy if the enemy team decides to to assault you piecemeal. Uh, can we get a couple more shots out at the Ishizuchi before that thing gets sunk? Let's see. Let's see if we can get the shots around the rear here. At least the rear turret's out, and there she did. Okay, and there comes the carrier again. I'm flooding, I'm perma-flooding, so that I'm dead now. Nothing I can do about it. And uh, but we are, we are comfortably three ki we're comfortable three kills behind after I've killed. Uh, I, I after I have killed all the enemy team. I just realized. <laughs> at, at least the bits that are, um, <laughs> at least the bits that are dead at this point. Uh, there's a Congo which is about to die, to the friendly. Uh, to the friendly defensive bulk here, and uh, that just leaves the uh, that just leaves the Rhine, which is somewhere out there. So uh, the Rio is that a great ship? Um, it's a tier five battleship. Um, it's it's fun for the memes of blapping destroyers, but you can use like if you want to use an Andrea Doria or something on the tech tree, you can do that kind of thing as well. Uh, is it a great ship? No, it isn't. 
in my opinion. The the secondaries are fun, and you're going to do as much damage with the secondaries as you're going to do with everything else, provided that the enemy team decides to play in your secondary range. Because if they're not, then your Najin Core would set 27 second reload. That said, um, occasionally you surprise a destroyer <laughs> and, and blast it clean out of the water, and that can be entertaining. So, uh, is it a, it's, a, it's an okay tier 5 battleship. And, uh, you know, if you want to do the occasional seal clubbing or, or things like that, then um, it's not the best ship out there, but it's there, it, can, it can be fun in, in, its own, in its own right and way, as you can see. <laughs> because, you know, tier 5, they have to add more damage with the secondaries. Tier 5 can be a little bit funny. So that's it for me today. Thanks, everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.